So welcome. We have the honor of introducing Harold Waite today. We are interviewing him for um, a featured artist event that we will be holding at the gallery 2023. So hopefully um, Harold will get to come down and spend some time with us and get to know some of the art buyers and collectors around our area. We are super, super excited. So, and if I may, just kind of give a little bit of backstory. Harold and I actually met through a mutual friend. So I just want to say thank you. I truly believe that things happen for a reason. So um, that mutual friend kind of made this connection. And so I just want to kind of throw that thank you out there as well. So welcome, Harold. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. I, I'm super excited to be here. I'm super excited about the show. And I'm super excited to be able to share my artwork with uh, the gallery and with you, Shannon. Thank you so much for bringing me on board. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So you are in New York, just outside of New York City or right uh, in New York City? I live in Brooklyn, New York City. I've been here for the past 12 years. Um, I've been in New York City primarily when I first moved here. I never stopped working on art, but I was working in fashion for quite some time. And um between fashion and art, just juggling both careers. And uh, yeah, I've just been here for 12 years. I love it out here, it's beautiful. <laughs> it is beautiful. It's one of the greatest <laughs> cities on earth, especially for this profession. So oh, absolutely. Um, we absolutely love New York and try to come as often as we can. So I understand that you actually moved to the States at the age of eight. So tell yep. us a little bit about what that was like for you. So it was very different. Um, I was born in Belize and um, surrounded by the jungle, you know, growing up, it was, it was a struggle. We grew up in like areas that were uh, high in poverty. I remember I still have pictures where I didn't even have shoes on my feet. <laughs> One day my mom ended up saving enough money to move to America. We got our visas. So we moved to America. We moved up to Miami, Florida. And, um, you know, growing up in Belize, I was always surrounded by nature which is where I stem a lot of like my abstract pieces from. And I grew up with this attachment towards nature and the love for it, even being in the States, um, you know, experiencing how nature is now kept, um, not more so around you anymore, but it's contained with all the houses and buildings, you know, you have your parks or you have your, um, your, your museums, but they honor nature, but it's not like in Belize where you just walk outside and it's all over the place and it's just attacking you. <laughs> <laughs> so moving to the US was definitely a big, uh, big change in environment. I love it out here. I consider myself an American citizen. I mean, I'm a, I am a citizen at this point. Um, and it's just allowed me to really look at the world and the way different people interact and meet and um, with nature as well. You know, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> the nature part I absolutely love as well, because you're correct. And especially around our area, because we're just north of Atlanta, a lot of construction, a lot of buildings. Uh -huh. So we actually have to drive a little ways to find anything that looks close to nature. Um, yeah. And that is very important because, I mean, as human beings, we need that serenity and that nature as well as food, water, shelter, anything else. We thrive when um, we're in nature. <clears throat> so your abstract works, well, let me back up. So in reading your bio and some of your background information, you have a passion for people and some of the needs in our world. That's definitely something you and I share. So a lot of important um, causes that you try to make a difference in. And with the abstracts, um, if I'm reading correctly, there's a, a, a large purpose for the nature and the global warming and preserving our earth. Yeah. So tell us a little more about that yeah. in terms of kind of how your art can speak that message. So basically with my artwork, I wanted to speak to the subconscious mind. So when I'm creating certain pieces 
And I showed them to people and I asked them, you know, what do you feel from this? What do you get from this? They say, you know, I feel like a sense of nature. I feel a sense of earth or I feel a sense of warmth. And I, then I usually ask, well, how would you go about protecting that? I'm a strong believer that the purpose of art during our time today is now to no longer just reflect the times, but to cause reason to impact change so we can change the times, so we can see some type of improvement when it comes down to really getting out there. It's not just more so about portraying what's going on. It's about how you're going to inspire other people to really, you know, dive in, go to nonprofit organizations, foundations to try to do the work. Yeah, because, you know, it's, it's like, Art is great when you're looking at it, but if it's just sitting on a canvas and we're not doing anything, you know, based around it because we have that inspiration, then it's just hanging, you know? And I, one of the purposes for my work is to inspire people to really go out there, go plant a tree, <laughs> really inspire people to go out there, you know, um, invest in protecting land and um, invest in really just the environment that we're in. Um, and that's been my sole reason for creating prior to even the abstract pieces. I have works that are inspired um, by situations of friends of mine who've had cancer or who had had HIV or um, my mom who's fought breast cancer. And I have paintings, topics of interest that, you know, educate people on those, situ uh, on those situations or those conditions and inspire people to want to do something about it. So when it comes back down to the abstract pieces, that's been my entire purpose around creating it. How am I going to get people involved, want them to get involved? How am I gonna inspire them to want to do something about the world we're in? And that is so important. That is so powerful. So powerful. Thank you. Thank you. And I love your process, you know, especially asking the feedback and getting just to, um, that humanness, you know, just to include, because mm -hmm. many artists by nature were, were more introverted and we sort of step back into our studios and, you know, we know what our heart is. We know the message we're wanting to kind of get out on that canvas, but it's definitely a kind of a solo process. So I love that you you know, ask for feedback and, and have those conversations because conversations and talking about things that are important is so powerful just within itself. Thank you so much. Yeah, one of the things I enjoy is usually when somebody says, well, you know, explain this painting to me and I see their, their heads kind of turn to the side <laughs> and their eyes squint and then I get the, oh, the aha moment, like, oh my gosh, this is connected to this. And this means, oh my, I love that feeling. It's almost like a, a quick awakening in a moment in time, you know, it's that itself, it's art. <laughs> <laughs> and then the art just sort of takes its own form. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So as a part of that process, do you, you know, if we, if we kind of change gears and go to some of the fundamentals because I know you have a lot of training a lot of experience a lot of education so as part of your process do you start out any particular way and then kind of let that evolve in terms of um, you know pre-treating your canvas or or do you just start with a raw canvas um, or any other media you know I'll, I'll say canvas just out of habit but you know, regardless of, of the media or the, you know, the plane that you're working with, do you have a specific process? Do you, um, you know, stand back and just kind of look at it and kind of let it come forth? I don't know if I'm making any sense, but what's that kind of those no, fundamentals? Understand. Absolutely. So for me, usually I, um, I make sure all of my canvas is coated with, um, well, with a white base. I work in layers. So like one of the paintings behind me um, is called Algae. And basically it's around the, the rainforest and it's about seven to eight different layers of paint. What I do is I'll start off with the base. I'll think about the idea of what though I want this to feel like, and then I'll move forward that way. Um, I usually, 
end up looking at my colors. I focus on the colors as well to try to make sure that they're complementary to what I want to portray in the art. And, um, and then I just let it take, take form. I let it take form. It's a lot of freehand movement. Um, I sometimes use brushes, sometimes I don't use brushes, sometimes I <laughs> dig deep and use a paint palette to create the art as well. I got inspired by one of these reels on Instagram. When I first started my abstract pieces, I got inspired by, um, it's like a video on Instagram where I saw this artist and she just grabbed paint splatter, splattered it on the canvas. And then from that, she used a piece of cardboard to kind of create a painting and it was a portrait. And in my head, I said, well, you know what? Why don't I become a little bit more hands-on than just a paintbrush? So whatever I could find my hands on to create what I need to get done, there's no rules about that. So let's just go ahead and get that done. So when it comes down to the abstract pieces, I do use some of my paint. I use my, uh, let me see if I have it with me. This is good. So use, I use the sides of my palette sometimes to kind of get the textures that I want. I also use the curves in my palette to actually get the, the, um, the shapes that I want when it comes down to creating my paintings. And then I finish it off with the brush strokes. So I think for me, that's just my unique way of my stamp, my signature stamp when it comes down to creating these individual pieces, which I find that are very particular to my style. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very interesting. Yeah. So it sounds like you you've just kind of found it. found your style, found your process. And that yeah. I believe is that's where our very personable, that vulnerable piece of us kind of comes from the heart, from our mind, from our soul, you know, out into our work too. And oh, absolutely. from an appraiser standpoint, those those small details, it's almost, um, well, as you said, it's, it's kind of your, you know, your autograph, a piece of you. So it's very significant to you. So years from now, if appraisers are, you know, appraising your work and, you know, it's worth millions of dollars and someone wants to authenticate it, those details and those very authentic um, pieces of your process is what's going to set it aside from maybe someone else or another artist. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. It's it's funny that you mentioned that because I um so one of my one of my professors one time he was like you know uh, what are you doing I was like you know I'm just creating art and he said you have to use paintbrush. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you have to use paintbrush. And I was like, I will, I will, I'll get to it eventually. But <laughs> I, I don't know, like, we're, I feel like we're in different times as well. So, you know, people are become, or they're finding different ways of doing things. And at the end of the day, what I said is, as long as we're getting the point done and it's unique to us as an artist, there is no really exact way of, okay, you have to use the paintbrush in order for it to be worth something. When, you know, it's like, as you said, it's unique to the artist. So with that, yeah, it makes me excited to, to not have seen anything like this technique in a while. <laughs> or anywhere else <laughs> that I know of. Anyway. Yeah. That is absolutely great. So <laughs> I know you said that you like to think about your colors, right? And make sure those colors are complementary to what the art is about. Do you ever find yes. that people ask you to create art from a home decor standpoint? So, you know, whatever the latest color trends oh, are. And is that difficult? Or do you find that if it's, nope. if it's from that home decor perspective, you just kind of have the same process, but go at it from a different mindset? Tell me a little bit about that. So I'm actually really glad that you asked about that. So coming from, you know, being in fashion for the past 12 years, well, since I've been in New York City, I've been in fashion and it's allowed me to kind of, you know, having, having a base, a foundation in art has allowed me to have a very specific eye when it comes down to fashion. And when we think about fashion, we think about textures, we think about, you know, fabrics and how they complement each other as well as colors. 
So when it comes down to creating my art pieces, I always think about bringing the outside in, you know, because I, I know these paintings are going to be in, uh, you know, houses or hotels or, you know, galleries. How do I bring that feeling or that, that, that thing that I want to communicate that's outside? How do I, I bring that in and how do I make people want to keep it in their homes? Is I do think about colors. And I do think about how the light is going to hit paintings, how that's going to, uh, you know, give that feeling uh, of, of, of nature. Like in one of my paintings, um, I use a gold acrylic. And when the light hits it, it kind of gives the feel of the shimmering of the sun rays from, you know, running or walking through the forest. And that's what I want it to feel like when my art is hanging in people's homes. I want them to feel like, no, it's not doomsday, but wow, there's so much beauty outside and I have a piece of that in my home right now. So when I'm creating these paintings, that's what I'm thinking about. Okay, you know, the, the, the colors that I'm gonna focus on this one, okay? It's gonna be red and it's gonna be black. And you know, why? Because it reminds me of lava and it reminds me of a volcanic explosion. And it reminds me of what happens when that explosion occurs and you know, what's left after that, you have your, your, your sedimentary, you have your metamorphic, your ig igneous rocks, you know, like I think that that's be beautiful nature, you know, the cause and effect of nature. And now you have a piece of that in your home that reminds you of a moment of time, a moment of time in time of nature, you know? So I'm really glad that you asked that question because people always say, oh my gosh, your paintings, they look great in a home or they look great in an environment. And that's because I keep that specific thing in mind when I'm picking my colors or I'm adding textures. Yeah. A lot of wisdom in that, <laughs> a lot of wisdom. Many, Thank many you. talents, many talents. And I love Thank that you, because the fashion industry, whew, I mean, that's just a beautiful thing too. So I love that, you know, you're, you're kind of, there's this big picture of how it all works so that it's just oh, beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's all, it, when, when we really think about it, it's all just a huge painting. I mean, like if, if you're good in fashion, that you know, you're, you're good with color theory, you're good with textures and matching and silhouettes and patterns, you, you have to have an eye for that. So when it comes down to art, to add in both, it's, it's just like a big puzzle piece coming together. That's what I find, at least for me. <laughs> 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 and and the challenge of putting that puzzle together that's what most of us thrive uh -huh. off of so oh, i love it. it's like <laughs> <laughs> oh me too me too we're tetris champions <laughs> <laughs> uh, well i am definitely excited to add you to our tranquility fun arts family we we started out a small gallery we are growing a lot's coming from Atlanta North, there's just so many good things going on for us. And we are really looking forward to continued growth and expanding and collaborating with um, fine arts, fine artists like yourself. So I am so thankful that we got connected. What, <clears throat> as we kind of finish up, yeah. and it's okay if you wanna take a second and think about this. So if okay. people are watching this interview five years from now, 10 years from now, what, what would you want them to know? What would you want them to take away and think, wow. I want them to take away, wow, the, the world around us is important. Um, you know, every single day where we're getting closer to a world that's not sustainable. And uh, I want them to, look at this video, look at these paintings and be like, wow, this is a moment in time. Again, I love using that saying, a moment in time where this was brought to our attention. What did I do from that moment to where I'm at now to make a difference or you know, cause impact? So how did I make a, take a idea, take an inspiration from painting and cause movement to it, me as an individual? It's not about what everybody else is doing around, but what, what am I doing, you know? And that's what I want people to get from not just this video, but basically anything that I create. I find that that's my purpose, to cause change through art. So hopefully I get an opportunity to do that with somebody who's watching this or somebody who's inspired enough to buy 
purchase a piece or talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Very well said. Very well said. Okay. So is there anything else you would like to add before we finish up? Well, I do want to say thank you to that friend, that mutual friend for connecting us. I also want to say thank you so much for supporting, you know, um, me. And uh, I do know that I, I, I stand firmly on so many topics and I'm so happy that, you know, I'm finally receiving more and more opportunities to really showcase my art because I wasn't traveling as much. I've had seven shows here in New York City, very successful shows, but um, this is actually going to be my first showcasing in Atlanta. And I'm glad that I get to do it at your gallery. I'm super excited about it. I can't stop talking about it. And um, I can't wait to see, you know, our relationship flourish and, and, and grow and, um, and the inspiration that we bring to more people. I'm super excited and grateful for it. So thank you to you as well. That's all I have to add. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you.